Greetings, everybody. Chaplain Bob Walker here, Light of the World Ministries. In John 8, 12, Jesus said, I am the light of the world. He that followeth me shall not walk in darkness, but shall have the light of life. Uh, I think this is part six. I'm not sure of terror. The terror of the Lord. So let's turn to Jeremiah chapter 20. And we're going to start in verse 1. I doubt we'll read the whole chapter. I have an entire commentary on the book of Jeremiah on my playlist, if you're interested. Jeremiah is a book that shows you the character of the Lord. The Lord hates sin. He hated it back in the old days, and he hates it today. And the enemy is climbing uh, out of their closet. They're not in the closet anymore. They're out in our face. And the Lord is showing the West just how depraved they really are. And the church is tolerating all this filth. So it's going to get worse and worse and worse. All right, so let's go and read verse 1. Now Pashur, the son of Immer, the priest, who was also chief governor in the house of the Lord, heard that Jeremiah prophesied these things. What things? Well, Jeremiah was prophesying that uh, the Lord said that Babylon is going to come and take you. Uh, the people that don't die in the war are going to be taken as slaves to Babylon. And, of course, everybody that was in a position of leadership, especially in the religious ecclesiastical type situation, they're saying, oh, Jeremiah, he's lying. He's, he's a traitor to our country and our people. He's a traitor. He's speaking lies in the name of the Lord. God would never do that to us. We're God's chosen people. Well, they're going to find out pretty soon who's lying and who's telling the truth. Verse 2, Then Pasher smote Jeremiah the prophet. He struck him and put him in the stocks that were in the high gate of Benjamin, which was by the house of the Lord. Now, I don't know if you remember, but they used to use stocks back in the days of the pilgrims. You were basically... Uh, they... Uh, they put them around your head and your arms, and you couldn't go anywhere. So, verse 3. And what they did was, is they made an example out of you. So, and it came to pass on the morrow that Pashur brought forth Jeremiah out of the stocks. Then said Jeremiah unto him, The Lord hath not called thy name Pashur, but Magor Misabib. And from what I understand, that means uh, fear on every side. Yeah, because when Babylon comes and they surround the city, there's going to be fear on every side. Verse 4. For thus saith the Lord, Behold, I will make thee a terror, a terror. Behold, I will make thee a terror to thyself. Why is he going to be a terror to himself? Well, you ever heard the expression, uh, you reap what you sow? Well, they sowed wickedness, so the Lord's going to let them reap that wickedness. Behold, I will make thee a terror to thyself and to all thy friends, and they shall fall by the sword of their enemies, and thine eye shall behold it. Oh yeah, they're going to die in the war and your eyes, are, your eyes are going to see the whole thing. 
And I will give all Judah into the hand of the king of Babylon, and he shall carry them captive into Babylon, and shall slay them with the sword. Moreover, I will deliver all the strength of this city, and all the labors thereof, and all the precious things thereof, and all the treasures of the kings of Judah, will I give into the hand of their enemies, which shall spoil them, and take them, and carry them to Babylon. And thou, Pashur, and all that dwell in thine house shall go into captivity, and thou shalt come to Babylon, and there shalt uh, thou shalt die, and shall be buried there, thou and all thy friends to whom thou hast prophesied lies. See the priests in the temple, they're they're lying. They're saying, Oh, don't listen to Jeremiah, God's not gonna do this to us. So Wow. Greetings, everybody. Get out your King James Bible. Turn to Jeremiah chapter 23. This is the continuation of the Jeremiah series. This is Chaplain Bob Walker, Light of the World Ministries in John 8, 12. Jesus said, I am the light of the world. He that followeth me shall not walk in darkness, but shall have the light of life. Jeremiah 23, verse 1. Woe! And he's not telling, um, he's not trying to get a horse to stop. No. W-O-E. Woe be unto the pastors. The pastors, the ministers, the priests, by whatever name they go by. Woe be unto the pastors that destroy and scatter the sheep of my pasture, saith the Lord. Boy. So the pastors destroy and scatter the sheep of his pasture. You know, the green, the green grass. The grass isn't always greener on the other side. I heard it once said that uh, the grass is always greener over the septic tank, but uh, I digress. You know, I could make this entire Bible study on nothing but sheep and shepherds, right? Well, a shepherd. You know, the first place you see the word sheep is in Genesis chapter 4 and verse 2. And she again, Eve, and she again bare his brother Abel. And Abel was a keeper of sheep, but Cain was a tiller of the ground. So Abel was a keeper of the sheep. He was the first uh, human shepherd, I guess you could, or you could say. And from what I understand, shepherd, S-H-E-P-H-E-R-D, is just a contraction for sheep herd. And you take sheep and herd, put them together, delete an E, and you got shepherd, right? And doesn't Jesus... Always talk about the flock being sheep? Oh, yeah. I was talking to somebody that, uh, uh, I don't know, they had sheep or knew somebody that had sheep or I don't know. But uh, he says sheep are the dumbest animals in the world. When the wolves come, the sheep will just kind of like just stand there and look at them. I mean, really? Really? Can I get an amen? Sheep in the churches. The enemy's looking at them. And what do they do? They just look at, you know, they just, they just stand there. Oh yeah, the wolves in the, wolves in the sheepfold. And the sheep are just bad. Boy, ain't that the truth. 
Let's read some verses about sheep in the New Testament. Matthew 7.15, Jesus speaking, Beware of false prophets, which come to you in sheep's clothing, but inwardly they are ravening wolves. Matthew 9.36, But when he, Jesus, saw the multitudes, he was moved with compassion on them because they fainted and were scattered abroad as sheep having no shepherd. All right, let's go to Matthew 10. Boy, I could read this whole chapter, but we're not. Let's start in verse 5. These twelve Jesus sent forth and commanded them, saying, Go not into the way of the Gentiles, and into any city of the Samaritans enter ye not, but go rather to the lost sheep of the house of Israel. The lost sheep of the house of Israel. Now anybody who's been listening to me for a while knows that Israel and Judah are not the same. Read Jeremiah 3 and verse 8. God divorced Israel, but not Judah. And then in Jeremiah 31, 31, and this is one of the reasons why I'm doing the Jeremiah series. But in Jeremiah 31, 31, the Lord says he'd make a new covenant with the house of Israel and the house of Judah. Not a renewed covenant. We don't need that Hebrew root stuff. No. New covenant. Jesus, Jesus said, But go rather to the lost sheep of the house of Israel, and as you go, preach, saying, The kingdom of heaven is at hand. Heal the sick. Cleanse the lepers. Raise the dead. Cast out devils. Boy, can you imagine uh, one of the disciples going to uh, some of these churches, especially some of these Pentecostal churches, and casting out devils? I imagine the place would be pretty empty. I don't know. Cast out devils. Freely ye have received, freely give. Provide neither gold nor silver nor brass in your purses, nor script for your journey. Uh, script is just a old... English way of saying paper money. Neither two coats, neither shoes, nor yet staves. For the workman is worthy of his meat. And into whatsoever city or town ye go, uh, ye shall enter, inquire who in it is worthy, and there abide till ye go thence. And when you're come into an house, salute it. And if the house be worthy, let your peace come upon it. But if it be not worthy, let your peace return to you. And whosoever shall not receive you, nor hear your words, when ye depart out of that house or city, shake off the dust of your feet. Verily I say unto you, it shall be more tolerable for the land of Sodom and Gomorrah in the day of judgment than for that city. Behold, I send you forth, behold, I send you forth as sheep in the midst of wolves. Be ye therefore wise as serpents and harmless as doves. But beware of men, for they will deliver you up to the councils, and they will scourge you in their synagogues. Oh, yeah. You know, this is going to be hate speech. Well, it already is hate speech, but, uh, you know, it's going to be hate speech. It is hate speech. It's going to be banned as hate speech. People just have no idea. And they will, uh, and they will scourge you in their synagogues. And ye shall be brought before governors and kings for my sake, for a testimony against them and the Gentiles. 
But when they deliver you up, take no thought how or what ye shall speak. Don't think about what you're going to say. For it shall be given you in that same hour what ye shall speak. For it is not ye that speak, but the Spirit of your Father, but the Spirit of your Father which speaketh in you. And the brother shall deliver up the brother to death, and the father the child. And the children shall rise up against their parents and cause them to be put to death. Sounds like the kids were educated in a public school, doesn't it? Oh, wait, it's not public school. It's government school. Verse 22, you'll never hear this preached in John Hagee's church. And ye shall be hated of all men for my name's sake. And what name is that, Bob? Uh, Jesus. Do they hate the name Yeshua? No, 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 they don't. They don't hate the name Yeshua. But my New Testament was written in Greek, and that name is Jesus. That's the name they hate. That's the name that casts out devils. That's the name that millions have gotten saved by. I don't know anybody that's gotten saved in the name of Yeshua. Oh, that's right. You're going to be taken to synagogues and be scourged, beaten. And ye shall be hated of all men for my name's sake, but he that endureth to the end shall be saved. What? We got to endure to the end? Chaplain Bob, what are you talking about here? I was told once saved, always saved. Eternal security. I mean, I went to a Billy Graham thingy and said a 30-second sinner's prayer and asked Jesus into my heart. And now I'm, I'm saved forever. Well, I don't know what to tell you. Argue with Jesus. But he that endureth to the end shall be saved. But when they persecute you in this city, flee ye into another. For verily I say unto you, ye shall not have gone over the cities of Israel till the Son of Man be come. The disciple is not above his master, nor the servant above his Lord. It is enough for the disciple that he be as his master. What do they do to the master? They beat him and then they crucified him on a cross. Remember? Remember? Yeah. They put him on a cross. Oh, Chaplain Bob, we're the, we're the bride of Christ. God, Jesus is not a wife beater. He would never make us suffer like that. Oh, yeah. They're idiots. It is enough for the disciple that he be as his master and the servant as his Lord. If they have called the master of the house Beelzebub, yeah, they call Jesus Beelzebub. That's a uh, Greek spelling of Baal, Baal, Baalzebub, Beelzebub, Lord of the Flies. And if they call Jesus the Lord of the Flies, how much more shall they call them of his household? Oh, yeah. Fear them not, therefore, for nothing that is covered that shall not be revealed and hid that shall not be known. Everything's going to be known. That's scary. There's going to be people looking at my life going, boy, how did this guy get in? Whew. Verse 27. What I tell you in darkness, that speak ye in light, and what ye hear in the ear, that preach upon, uh, preach ye upon the housetops. And fear not them which kill the body, but are not able to kill the soul, but rather fear him that is able to destroy both soul and body in hell. Are not two sparrows sold for a farthing? And one of them shall not fall to the ground without your father. You know, when a sparrow falls to the ground, God the Father knows it. But the very hairs on your head are all numbered. Even if you're bald. Fear ye not, therefore, 
Ye are of more value than many sparrows. Whosoever therefore shall confess me before men, him will I confess also before my Father which is in heaven. But whosoever shall deny me before men, him will I also deny before my Father which is in heaven. Think not that I am come to send peace on earth. I am not I came not to send peace, but a sword. But what about that Christmas song? You know, peace on earth, goodwill towards men. Uh, I think there got the song about a different Christ. I, that's my guess. Verse 35, For I am come to set a man at variance against his father, and the daughter against her mother, and the daughter-in-law against her mother-in-law, and a man's foes, a man's enemies, shall be they of his own household. He that loveth father or mother more than me is not worthy of me, and he that loveth son or daughter more than me is not worthy of me, and he that taketh not his cross and followeth after me is not worthy of me. Oof. He that findeth his life shall lose it. And he that loseth his life for my sake shall find it. And that's eternal life. He that receiveth you receiveth me. And he that receiveth me receiveth him that sent me. Who sent Jesus? God the Father sent him. Remember, when you reject Christ, you reject him who sent Christ. Somebody send John Hagee's church a memo there. Verse 41. He that receiveth a prophet in the name of a prophet shall receive a prophet's reward. And he that receiveth a righteous man in the name of a righteous man shall receive a righteous man's reward. And whosoever shall give to drink unto one of these little ones a cup of cold water only in the name of a disciple, verily I say to you, he shall in no wise lose his reward. <laughs> All right, in Matthew 10, verse 10, 10, 10, take heed, Jesus speaking here, take heed that you despise not one of these little ones. For I say unto you that in heaven their angels... Their angels do always behold the face of my Father, which is in heaven. Do you ever hear that, that uh, little children have guardian angels? Well, maybe this is where they got the idea from. Little ones, that in heaven, their angels do always behold the face of my Father, which is in heaven. For the Son of Man is come to save that which was lost. How think ye? If a man have an hundred sheep, and one of them be gone astray, doth he not leave the ninety and nine, and goeth into the mountains, and seeketh that which is gone astray? And if so be that he find it, verily I say unto you, he rejoiceth more of that sheep than of the ninety and nine which went not astray. Even so, it is not the will of your Father, which is in heaven, that one of these little ones should perish. In Matthew 25, verse 31, When the Son of Man, and that's Christ, Christ was the Son of God and the Son of Man. He had a dual nature. He was God come in the flesh, 1 Timothy 3.16, yet he was born of a woman. And if you can figure that out, well, I can't understand it perfectly, but that is what the Bible teaches. And I know I've said it a few times before, but uh, the Eastern mystical religions teach that man could become God. We could achieve Godhood. But Christianity teaches that God became man. Look up Emmanuel, God with us. What do you think that means, God with us? 
Verse 31, when the Son of Man shall come in his glory and all the holy angels with him. Now, if there's holy angels, you better believe there are unholy angels. When the Son of Man shall come in his glory and all the holy angels with him, then shall he sit upon the throne of his glory. And before, and before him shall be gathered all nations, and he shall separate them one from another. As a shepherd divideth his sheep from the goats. Let you know a little secret here. Sheep marry, well, sheep have sheep for children. Goats have goats for children. A sheep can act like a goat, and a goat can act like a sheep. But goats are born goats, and sheep are born sheep. She goats do not magically become goats do not magically become sheep because they believe in Jesus. Even Satan believes in Jesus, and if you don't believe me. Read James chapter 2. Sheep are born sheep and goats are born goats. And I'll tell you what, they uh, churches hide that doctrine quite well. They call it whosoever will, Arminianism. See, they don't want you to know that God has an elect, that God has a chosen people. Well, yeah, they sort of kind of do, but they want you to think it's the people in the Middle East that deny Christ. That's their chosen people. But they absolutely do not want you to ever know that believers, Christians, true believers, are God's chosen elect. No, they want you to think that whosoever will, you know, Anybody can believe, and then they're, they're, you know, they get saved, and, you know, we're in a war. And when you don't even know that you have an enemy, you're lost. You've lost the war. When you can't even, when your church will not even identify who the enemy is, or that there even is an enemy, or we're in a war. How can you possibly win? You can't. You can't. Which is why the world is messed up as it is. And one day all those pastors in Jeremiah 23, woe be unto them, they're going to have to answer for this one day. So when Jesus comes in his glory with the holy angels, verse 32, and before him shall be gathered all nations and he shall separate them one from another as a shepherd divideth his sheep from the goats. And he, saw, and he shall set the sheep on his right hand, but the goats on the left. Then shall the king say unto them, on his right hand, come ye, blessed of my father, inherit the kingdom prepared for you from the foundation of the world. For I was an hungered, and ye gave me meat. I was thirsty, and ye gave me drink. I was a stranger, and ye took me in. Naked, and ye clothed me. I was sick, and ye visited me. I was in prison, and ye came unto me. See, their works showed forth their faith. Works are proof of what you believe. You're not saved by your works. We're saved by grace. But people that are truly saved will bring forth good fruit, good works. It just comes naturally. Verse 37, Then shall the righteous answer him, saying, Lord, when saw we thee and hungered and fed thee or thirsty and gave thee drink when saw we thee a stranger and took thee in or naked and clothed thee 
Or when saw we thee sick or in prison and came unto thee? And the king shall answer and say unto them, Verily I say unto you, inasmuch as ye have done it unto one of the least of these my brethren, ye have done it unto me. Then shall he also say unto them on the left hand, Depart from me, ye cursed, into everlasting fire, prepared for the devil and his angels. Isn't it funny? Liberals, communists, socialists always call themselves the left. And then those that believe the Bible, they call the right. Where do they come up with this? Right here, the Bible. You want to be on the right or do you want to be on the left? Well, do you want to be right or do you want to be wrong? I'm telling you, sheep are sheep and goats are goats. Period. And what did the goats do? They didn't give them anything to drink, nothing to eat. They didn't clothe them. They didn't do nothing for them. All they wanted to do was sit around and count their money. Then in verse 46, And these shall go away into everlasting punishment, but the righteous into life eternal. Oh yeah. In John chapter 10, verse 7, Jesus, Then said Jesus unto them again, Verily, verily, I say unto you, I am the door of the sheep. All that ever came before me are thieves and robbers, but the sheep did not hear them. I am the door. By me, if any man enter in, he shall be saved and shall go in and out and find pasture. Verse 10. The thief cometh not, but for to steal and to kill and to destroy. I am come that they might have life and that they might have it more abundantly. I am the good shepherd. The good shepherd giveth his life for the sheep. But he that is an hireling, 700 club, TBN. But he that is an hireling and not the shepherd, whose own the sheep are not, seeth the wolf coming, and leaveth the sheep and fleeth. And the wolf catcheth them and scattereth the sheep. The hiring fleeth because he is an hireling and careth not for the sheep. I am the good shepherd and know my sheep and am known of mine. As the Father knoweth me, even so know I the Father, and I lay down my life for the sheep. And other sheep I have which are not of this fold, them also I must bring, and they shall hear my voice. You see, God's sheep hear his voice voice. You ever wonder why some people can't hear the voice of the Lord? They're not his sheep. They're goats. They're goats. Goats are born goats and sheep are born sheep. Goats can act like sheep and sheep can act like goats, but they're still And other sheep I have which are not of this fold, them also I must bring, and they shall hear my voice, and there shall be one fold and one shepherd. There's only one church, people. There's not a, a Baptist church and a Pentecostal church and a, a Messianic Jewish church. No. You're either in Christ or you're not. There's one fold and one shepherd. Verse 17, Therefore doth my father love me, because I lay down my life, that I might take it again. No man taketh it from me, but I lay it down of myself. I have power to lay it down, and I have power to take it again. This commandment have I received of my father. Oh yeah. In John 10, 26, Jesus told the you-know-whos, but ye believe not because 
but ye believe not because ye are not of my sheep as I said unto you. My sheep hear my voice and I know them and they follow me. Oh yeah. All right, let's go to Hebrews 13 and we're going to go back to Jeremiah. Verse 20. Hebrews 13, 20. Now the God of peace that brought again from the dead our Lord Jesus, that great shepherd of the sheep, that great shepherd of the sheep through the blood of the everlasting covenant. See, it's a new covenant, not a renewed covenant. Make you perfect in every good work to do his will, working in you that which is well-pleasing in his sight through Jesus Christ, to whom be glory forever and ever. Amen. And watch out for those Hebrew roots people. You will end up denying the name Jesus. You will end up denying Paul as an apostle. And then next thing you know, you'll be wanting to bring sheep to uh the temple and that they want to rebuild. Believe me, it happens. I've seen it. They always end up denying Paul. They always end up denying the name Jesus. They always end up claiming the New Testament was mistranslated by those horrible Greeks. Probably, uh, when you read the uh, is... Ray Lee newspapers, they say the most evil country in, the, in Europe is Greece. Why? Because they have per capita the most churches of any, probably in any country in the world per capita. Yeah. I don't know how true it is. I've never been there. But let's go verse 2 Jeremiah 23 verse 2 therefore now well, let's start from the beginning verse 1 woe be unto the pastors that destroy and scatter the sheep of my pasture saith the Lord therefore thus saith the Lord God of Israel against the pastors that feed my sheep sounds like those sheep would be starving huh Ye have scattered my flock and driven them away, and have not visited them. Behold, I will visit upon you the evil of your doings, saith the Lord. And I will gather the remnant of my flock out of all countries whither I have driven them, and will bring them again to their folds, and they shall be fruitful and increase. And I will set up shepherds, over them which shall feed them and they shall fear no more nor be dismayed neither shall they be lacking saith the Lord behold the days come saith the Lord that I will raise unto David a righteous branch and a king shall reign and prosper and shall execute judgment and justice in the earth now who do you think this is uh, Jesus was born of a woman of, well, Mary was of the tribe of Levi, the priests, the law. But when you look at the male side of who she was married to is Joseph. Christ is likened unto of the tribe of Judah. I wonder if somewhere down the line, if you go, went back into Mary's genealogy, if somewhere there was a the tribe of Judah in there somewhere. I don't know. Because Joseph was definitely not the father of Christ. Behold, the days come, saith the Lord, that I will raise unto David a righteous branch, and a king shall reign and prosper, and shall execute judgment and justice in the earth. In his days Judah shall be 
saved, and Israel shall dwell safely. See, there's a distinction, Judah and Israel. And there, and this is his name, whereby he shall be called the Lord our righteousness. Well, there you go. Jesus Christ is Lord. Where is our righteousness? By his blood. And if you don't understand that, and if I have to go through that, you need to read the Bible big time. Uh, I would suggest the book of Hebrews. Therefore, behold, the days come, saith the Lord, that they shall no more say, The Lord liveth, which brought up the children of Israel out of the land of Egypt. But the Lord liveth, which brought up and which led the seed of the house of Israel out of the north country, out of the north country, and from all countries whither I have driven them, and they shall dwell in their own land. Well, I'm sorry, but this hasn't, has not happened yet. What country is north of Israel? Europe. So when they say they're going to, uh, the seed of the house of Israel out of the north country, you know, the Lord's going to bring them out of the land of the north. What do you think he's talking about? Somebody tell the black Hebrews. I mean, seriously. Africa is south, not north. Europe is north. Europe printed the Bibles. Europe translated the Bible into the language of the common man. Europe built the churches. Europe printed the Bibles. No, they were, they were infiltrated. But nevertheless, some of them at least tried to honor the Lord. So, verse 9. Mine heart within me is broken because of the prophets. All my bones shake. I am like a drunken man and like a man whom wine hath overcome because of the Lord and because of the words of his holiness. For the land is full of adulterers, uh, physical or spiritual or both. For because of swearing the land mourneth, the pleasant places of the wilderness are dried up, and their course is evil, and their force is not right. For both prophet and priest are profane. Wow. For both prophet and priest are profane. Yea, in my house have I heard their wickedness, saith the Lord. Wherefore, their way shall be unto them as slippery ways in the darkness, they shall be driven on and fall therein, for I will bring evil upon them, even the year of their visitation, saith the Lord. And I have seen folly in the prophets of Samaria. They prophesied in Baal, Baal Satanism. They prophesied in Baal and caused my people Israel to err. Err. That's where you get the word error. Wrong. They cause my people Israel to err, to be wrong. Verse 14. Tell me this isn't any different here in the U.S. Or I'm sure the U.K. and uh, Europe is the same thing. You can apply this to the Vatican. You could apply this to the Church of England. You can apply this to almost every single denomination demon nomination in the United States. Verse 14. I have seen also in the prophets of Jerusalem, the prophets of Jerusalem, an horrible thing. They commit adultery and walk in lies. They strengthen also the hands of evildoers, that none doth return from his wickedness. You think these people preach repentance? No! No, they don't preach repentance. 
They strengthen also the hands of evildoers, that none doth return from his wickedness. They are all of them unto me as Sodom, and the inhabitants thereof as Gomorrah. Wow. What did God do to Sodom and Gomorrah? He uh, gave them a shake and bake in the oven, right? Verse 15. Therefore, thus saith the Lord of hosts concerning the prophets, Behold, I will feed them with wormwood and make them drink the water of gall. What did they give Jesus on the cross when he was thirsty? Vinegar mingled with gall. I understand it tastes nasty. And make them drink the water of gall. For from the prophets of Jerusalem is profaneness gone forth into all the land. Thus saith the Lord of hosts, Hearken not, don't listen, hearken not unto the words of the prophets that prophesy unto you. They make you vain, worthless. They speak a vision of their own heart and not out of the mouth of the Lord. They say still unto them that despise me. The Lord has said, ye shall have peace. And they say, and they say unto everyone that walketh after the imagination of his own heart, no evil shall come upon you. Everything's all right. We're going to have peace. We're going to have safety. We're going to have, we're going to have wealth and health. Verse 18. For who hath stood in the counsel of the Lord and hath perceived and heard his word? Who hath marked his word and heard it? Behold, a whirlwind of the Lord is gone forth in fury. What's a whirlwind? A tornado is one. A hurricane's another. A cyclone. Behold, a whirlwind of the Lord has gone forth in fury, even a grievous whirlwind. It shall fall grievously upon the head of the wicked. Now, one of the previous studies, I mentioned the uh, church that was hit on an Easter Sunday with a tornado and killed some people. But um, do you know that Hurricane Katrina that devastated New Orleans do you know there was a gay pride parade that was scheduled to be um, happen uh, shortly before Katrina hit? Yeah, they were going to have a gay pride parade. Oh, it got canceled. Behold, a whirlwind of the Lord has gone forth in fury, even a grievous whirlwind. It shall fall grievously upon the head of the wicked. You know, there's not very many more evil places than New Orleans. Verse 20. The anger of the Lord shall not return until he hath executed and till he hath performed the thoughts of his heart. In the latter days, in the last days, in the latter days, ye shall consider it perfectly. Well, here you go, people. In the latter days, ye shall consider it perfectly. You'll understand. Trust me. Those that have eyes to see and ears to hear, that seek the face of the Lord, they'll understand. Verse 21. Speaking of the false churches. I have not sent these prophets, yet they ran. I have not spoken to them, yet they prophesied. But if they had stood in my counsel and had caused my people to hear my words, then they should have turned them from their evil way and from the evil of their doings. Am I a God at hand, saith the Lord, and not a God afar off? You know, am I a God close or am I a God far away? Verse 24, can any hide himself in secret places that I shall not see him? And the answer is no. 
Can any hide himself in secret places that I shall not see him, saith the Lord? Do not I fill heaven and earth, saith the Lord? Verse 25. I have heard what the prophets said, that prophesy lies in my name, saying, I have dreamed. I have dreamed. Uh, wasn't there a guy... Um, in the 60s, uh, whose initials are M, and then after that is an L, and then there's a K. Didn't he say, I have a dream? I have a dream. He was called Reverend. But you know, in his speeches, I never heard him not once ever quote Jesus. Not one time. And I noticed everywhere he went, there were riots. I have heard what the prophets said, that prophesy lies in my name, saying, I have dreamed, I have dreamed. How long shall this be in the heart of the prophets that prophesy lies? Yea, they are prophets of the deceit of their own heart, which think to cause my people to forget my name by their dreams, which they tell every man to his neighbor, as their fathers have forgotten my name for Baal. Now remember, Baal's just a generic name for Lord. Hey, Church of Satan can call Satan is Baal. Satan is Lord. To them he is. But, and it got so bad associated with Satanism that the Lord says, don't call me by that name anymore. which think to cause my people to forget my name by their dreams, which they tell every man to his neighbor as their fathers have forgotten my name for Baal. The prophet that hath a dream, let him tell a dream. And he that hath my word, let him speak my word faithfully. What is the chaff to the wheat, saith the Lord? The dream is the chaff, and the word is the wheat. What is chaff? Well, the chaff is the part of the wheat that you don't eat. You know, it's like rice. The part of the plant, the leaves. You don't eat the leaves, you eat the rice kernel. What do you do with the chaff, the dried out brown leaves that you can't eat? You burn them. The prophet that hath a dream, let him tell a dream. And he that hath my word, let him speak my word faithfully. What is the chaff to the wheat, saith the Lord? Is not my word like a fire, saith the Lord? And like a hammer that breaketh the rock in pieces? Therefore, behold, I am against the prophets, saith the Lord, that steal my words every one from his neighbor. Behold, I am against the prophets, saith the Lord, that use their tongues and say, he saith, Behold, I am against them that prophesy false dreams, saith the Lord, and do tell them, and cause my people to err by their lies and by their likeness. Yet I sent them not. I didn't send these people, nor commanded them. Therefore they shall not profit this people at all, saith the Lord. And when this people or the prophet or priest shall ask thee, saying, What is the burden of the Lord? Thou shalt then say unto them, What burden? I will even forsake you, saith the Lord. You know, Jeremiah had a burden to warn the people. 
Verse 34. And as for the prophet and the priest and the people that shall say, The burden of the Lord, I will even punish that man and his house. See, warning the flock is really not a burden. It really isn't. It's our duty, actually. Well, some of us, it's our duty. Verse 35, Thus shall ye say to every one to his neighbor, and every one to his brother, What hath the Lord answered? And said, What hath the Lord spoken? And the burden of the Lord shall be, Ye mention no more, for every man's word shall be his burden. For ye have perverted the words of the living God, of the Lord of hosts, our God. Thus shalt thou say to the prophet, What hath the Lord answered thee? And what hath the Lord spoke, sp spoken? But since ye say the burden of the Lord, therefore thus saith the Lord, because ye say this word, the burden of the Lord, and I have sent unto you, saying, Ye shall not say the burden of the Lord. See, these false prophets thought God's word was a heavy load. Verse 39. Therefore, behold, I, even I, will utterly forget you, and I will forsake you, and the city that I gave you and your fathers, and cast you out of my presence and I will bring an everlasting reproach unto you and a perpetual shame which shall not be forgotten that doesn't sound too good now does it woe unto the pastors that scatter the sheep you know I never wanted to be a teacher. I did not want this job. Trust me. But I kind of felt like the Lord had said, you know what? If not you, then who? And I know there's a few, there's some faithful people out there. You know, I'm not doing this for money. I'm not doing this for fame, fortune. You know, I've gotten death threats from uh, when I first started posting Bible studies on YouTube. They wanted me to shut up. So, you do what you can. And may I never teach falsehood in the name of the Lord. May I never do that. I hope the Lord will guide me in the way that we need to teach. But if you ever see a, a ministry that doesn't teach repentance, they're wolves. If they don't tell people to turn from their wicked ways, they're wolves. Run to the shepherd and run away from the wolves. And like I mentioned earlier, somebody had sheep and they said, sheep are the dumbest animal on the face of the planet. Can I get a spiritual application for that? Yeah, church people. Dumbest animals on the face of the planet. If they had read the Bible, the wolves behind the pulpit, the lying false prophets would not be able to get away with what they're getting away with. But that's the way it is. You know... When I got out of Bible college, I wanted so badly to be a Bible teacher at a Christian so-called school. Didn't take me long to figure out, you can't reform Babylon. It's impossible. They don't have sheep in those schools. They got goats. That's what they want. The sheep don't want to hear, for the most part, the sheep don't want to hear what God has to say about repentance. Don't want to hear it. Nope. Like Charles Spurgeon once said, there would come a time 
that instead of uh, pastors teaching the sheep that they would have goats, I'm sorry, that they would have wolves entertaining the goats. And that's what you got nowadays. You got wolves entertaining the goats in churches. It's sad. Well, I'm paraphrasing Pat Spurgeon there. <sighs> and then you get a few sheep that actually are looking for something to eat and they're dying of starvation. In Amos 8.11, it says, Behold, the days come, saith the Lord God, that I will send a famine in the land, not a famine of bread, nor a thirst of for water, but of hearing the words of the Lord. And you know what? With some of these laws that they're passing now, now this is March 2nd, 2021. With some of these laws that they're passing now, the Bible is going to be considered hate speech. Well, it already is. But uh, there's going to come a day when it's not allowed. It's not allowed. I think that's why they're doing the Hebrew roots thing. They can claim the Bible, New Testament was mistranslated. Paul was a false apostle. And his name really isn't Jesus, you know. You know, the New Testament, oh, it was in Hebrew and then mistranslated by those horrible Greeks that suffered horribly and persecuted for the name of Jesus. You don't see any people dying for the name of Yeshua, do you? No. Yeah, and you won't. Not going to happen. Matter of fact, if you talk to those of the mystical variety, if you catch my trift, um... To them, Yeshua is, well, one of the Yeshua is uh, Rabbi Schneerson. But he died a number of years ago, and they're still waiting for his body to resurrect from the grave. Uh, they're going to be waiting for a while, at least a thousand years from now, if you know what I mean. Oh, all right, people. Uh, I've ranted raved for almost an hour, so... All blessings, praise, glory, glory, and honor to God the Father and His only begotten Son, Jesus, who is the Christ, the Lamb of God, slain from the foundation of the world, the great shepherd of the sheep. All blessings, praise, glory, and honor in Jesus' name. Amen. All right. Uh, let's take a look at Ezekiel chapter 32. Uh, a little background here. Uh, Egypt was, to my knowledge, Egypt was never spoken of nicely in the Bible. And it was called the land of Ham. And Ham was the father of Canaan and the Canaanites. And God was not pleased with the Canaanites and told Israel to go into the land and kill them all. Yeah. But here's the deal. Egypt was the land that had many gods. Perhaps you've heard of Ra and Set and uh, Horus and uh, a, n a bunch of them. I mean, if you look up the gods of Egypt, uh, I think they've even done some movies about that, right? Gods of Egypt. Yeah, which were probably, I'm sure they're demons, devils, whatever, but... Uh, Egypt was never part of God's covenant. Never. So keep that in mind. And when you read the book of Exodus, uh, all the plagues of Egypt, which will mimic the plagues of Revelation in a lot of ways. And I did a playlist on contrasting and comparing the plagues of Egypt Egypt with the plagues of Revelation. They're very, very similar in a lot of ways. Uh, they have some differences, but very, very different. Uh, very, very similar. Ezekiel chapter 32. And I got a playlist on 
Ezekiel also, so greetings everybody. I hope everybody enjoyed that Ezekiel 31. I mean, it's, uh, you know, that is a chapter that nobody in a denominate, demon denominational church will touch with a 10 foot pole. And, uh, you know, everybody thinks, oh, that Bob, he's crazy uh, after that chapter 30 study where I mentioned, you know, did all races come from Adam? Well, Ezekiel 31 pretty much shows you there were other people in the Garden of Eden with Adam and Eve. I mean, you know, uh, the Assyrian was a cedar in the garden. And all the other trees, family trees, envied him. Well, trees don't have emotions. So they're talking about family trees. And the Assyrian and the other trees were already in the garden. So, I mean, it's pretty, you know, figures of speech. It's pretty plain and clear. I mean, you know, it's, and this is, I had an 1890s uh, church book. It was like a Bible, uh, maybe it was a Bible college book. I'm not sure. Uh, I had it about 20 years ago. And this is the kind of stuff they taught 100 years ago. Well, a little over 100 years ago. But it was an 1890s uh, theology book. And they knew what was up. And uh, my, uh, at the time, I was uh, I had relocated from Tennessee to Florida. I'd hurt my back working, and uh, so I was staying with Dad. And his uh, his Doby, she was a sweet girl. She took the book out of the bookcase and chewed it to pieces. I was like, oh man, you know. But she had been abused. She was a rescue dog. Uh, and I, I, you know, what are you going to do? It's just a dog. Uh, it had leather, had a leather cover and probably horse glue. And she sniffed it and said, man, this smells good. And she chewed it to pieces. It was not worth, I couldn't, I couldn't, there was no way to save that book. I mean, you know, Doberman's jaws are, uh, you know, if it had been a chihuahua, I probably could have, but uh, Doby, no. So when people uh, say, oh, well, Bob, you're all wrong about Ezekiel 31. Well, let me tell you something. A hundred years ago, abortion was illegal. There was no Church of Satan. Uh, those that committed, uh, well, let's just say the residents of Sodom, what they did was illegal. You didn't have, don't ask and, uh, don't tell in the military. And you didn't have people arguing over, you know, rights for those, for that stuff. So were they, and they weren't getting married either. So were the people in the 1890s, were they just a bunch of hypocrites and evil that wanted to deprive people of their rights? Or did they really know what was going on and this is the time of the great falling away? Well, if you think Calvary Chapel and all those TV preachers on, you know, the television preachers are uh, doing God's work, well, you won't like me. And uh, who knows, maybe you'll get to join them for their, where they're going for their eternal reward. So the Bible says, examine yourselves, whether ye be in the faith. You know, 
And Paul writes in 2 Corinthians chapter 13 and verse 5, he says, Examine yourselves, whether ye be in the faith, prove your own selves. Know ye not your own selves, how that Jesus Christ is in you, except ye be reprobates? Yeah, I don't, you know, I don't want to be a reprobate, that's for sure. And then in 2 Timothy 2.15, Paul writes to study, study to show thyself approved unto God, a workman that needeth not to be ashamed, rightly dividing the word of truth. And of course, to the demon nominational dispensational pre trib rapture crowd, that means uh, studying uh, Larkin's uh, book called Dispensational Lies. I mean, I mean dispensational truth where he chops the Bible up into all these different time periods. But that's not what dispen dispensation means. It means uh, to be given something. It does absolutely does not mean a period of time. It has nothing to do with a period of time. So, but they'll tell you, oh yeah, it's a period of time. God works different ways in different times. But the Bible says Jesus Christ, the same yesterday, today, and forever. Uh, you know, dis dispensation means to dispense. It means to give something. Moses was the dispensation of law. He, God gave Moses the law, and law gave, uh, J Moses gave the law to Israel. Jesus gave us grace. Big difference. Of course, your dispensational church thinks the Antichrist are God's chosen people. Uh, if you don't know what an Antichrist is, uh, well, let me give you something to look up real quick. And by the way, we're going to be doing Ezekiel chapter 32. Definition of an Antichrist, 1 John 2 and verse Chapter 2 and verse 22. 1 John 2, 22. Who is a liar but he that denieth that Jesus is the Christ, he is antichrist, that denieth the Father and the Son. So look around the world at a religious groups of people. Find out those that deny that Jesus is the Christ. Uh, they're looking for another Messiah. And then you'll know who the Antichrists are. Of course, your demon nominational churches teach the chosen ones. All right, let's do Ezekiel chapter 32. This is Chaplain Bob Walker, Light of the World Ministries. In John 8, 12, Jesus said, I am the light of the world. He that followeth me shall not walk in darkness, but shall have the light of life. Ezekiel 32, verse 1. And it came to pass in the twelfth year, in the twelfth month, in the first day of the month, that the word of the Lord came unto me, saying, Son of man, take up a lamentation for Pharaoh, king of Egypt. Boy, I'll tell you what, the uh, Lord doesn't sound like he likes Pharaoh very much. Or Egypt. And say unto him, Thou art like a young lion of the nations, and thou art as a whale in the seas, and thou camest forth with thy rivers, and troublest the waters with thy feet, and foulest their rivers. So he, when he touched the rivers, he made them foul. Verse 3, Thus saith the Lord God, I will therefore spread out my net over thee with a company of many people, and they shall bring thee up in my net. Now, what do you do with a net? Well, fishermen's you, fishermen use nets to catch fish, right? Yeah. Verse 4. Then will I leave thee upon the land. I will cast thee forth upon the open field and will cause all the fowls of the heaven to remain upon thee. And I will fill the beasts of the whole earth with thee. So I guess the buzzards are going to fill their stomachs with uh, the dead. Verse 5. 
And I will lay thy flesh upon the mountains and fill the valleys with thy height. Listen to this, verse 6. I will also water with thy blood. Wow. You know how you go into the garden and you water the plants with your hose? Well, God's going to water the ground with their blood. I will also water with thy blood the land wherein thou swimmest, even to the mountains, and the rivers shall be full of thee. And when I shall put thee out, I will cover the heaven and make the stars thereof dark. I will cover the sun with a cloud, and the moon shall not give her light. Oh, boy. Where have we read this before? Well, how about Isaiah 13? Um, Isaiah 13, verse 9. Behold, the day of the Lord cometh. The day of the Lord cometh, cruel, both with wrath and fierce anger, to lay the land desolate, and he shall destroy the sinners thereof out of it. And he shall destroy the sinners thereof out of it. For the stars of heaven and the constellations thereof shall not give their light the sun shall be darkened in his going forth, and the moon shall not cause her light to shine. And I will punish the world for their evil, and the wicked for their iniquity, and I will cause the arrogancy of the proud to cease, and will lay low the haughtiness of the terrible. Interesting. Uh, that is same kind of language they use in uh, Joel. Same kind of language in Revelation. What about Mark 13? Verse 23. Mark 13 is a alternate version of Matthew 24, the end time chapter. Uh, somebody wrote me or left a comment or something, and they said, you know, why did Jesus go to so much trouble to explain what things would be like in the end times if we're not going to be here? Good question. Why would he go to so much trouble to tell people what things would happen before the end if we weren't going to be here? Oh, don't worry about it. You're going to fly away in the pre-trib rapture before this happens. All this other information, that's for the other guys left behind. Yeah, right. Mark 13, 22. He tells you, For false Christs and false prophets shall rise and shall show signs and wonders, false miracles, and shall show, and shall show signs and wonders to seduce, if it were possible, even the elect. But take ye heed, behold, I have foretold you all things. Pay attention. He's showing you all these things, right? Take heed. But in those days, after that tribulation, after that tribulation, not before, oh, Chaplain Bob, that's mistranslated. That's what my pre-trib rapture teacher taught me. Sorry, Charlie. I trust the King James Bible. You know, I have about as much respect for a used car salesman than I do for TV preachers. Maybe less. But in those days after the tribulation, the sun shall be darkened. The sun shall be darkened and the moon shall not give her light. And the stars of heaven shall fall, and the powers that are in heaven shall be shaken. Right? Same time. I could I could read out of Revelation. I could read Matthew 24. Uh, you know, 
The Lord tells you what's going to happen. Verse 7. Ezekiel 32, 7. And when I shall put thee out, I will cover the heaven and make the stars thereof dark. And I will cover the sun with a cloud, and the moon shall not give her light. All the bright lights of heaven will I make dark over thee, and set darkness upon thy land, saith the Lord God. I will also vex the hearts of many people, when I shall bring thy destruction among the nations into the countries which thou hast not known. Yea, I will make many people amazed at thee, and their kings shall be horribly afraid of thee, uh, horribly afraid for thee, when I shall brandish my sword before them, and they shall tremble at every moment, every man, every man for his own life, in the day of thy fall. For thus saith the Lord God, the sword of the king of Babylon shall come upon thee. By the swords of the mighty will I cause thy multitude to fall. The terrible of the nations, all of them, and they shall spoil the pomp of Egypt, and all the multitude thereof shall be destroyed. I will destroy also all the beasts thereof from beside the great waters, Neither shall the foot of man trouble them any more, nor hooves of beast trouble them. Then will I make their waters deep, and cause the rivers to run like oil, saith the Lord God. When I shall make the land of Egypt desolate, and the country shall be destitute of what thereof it was full, when I shall smite all them that dwell therein, then shall they know that I am the Lord. This is the lamentation wherewith they shall lament her. The daughters of the nations shall lament her. They shall lament for her, even for Egypt, and for all her multitude, saith the Lord God. It came to pass also, in the twelfth year, in the fifteenth day of the month, that the word of the Lord came unto me, saying, Son of man, wail for the multitude of Egypt, and cast them down, even her and the daughters of the famous nations, unto the nether parts of the earth, with them that go down into the pit. The, have you ever heard of the nether world? Uh, it's talking about the place of the dead. Unto the nether parts of the earth with them that go down into the pit. Whom dost thou pass in beauty? Go down, and be thou laid with the uncircumcised. Now remember, circumcision was a sign for the Lord's people. So the uncircumcised are those who are not God's people. Verse 20. They shall fall in the midst of them that are slain by the sword. She is delivered to the sword. Draw her and all her multitudes. The strong among the mighty shall speak to him out of the midst of hell with them that help him. Oh, Chaplain Bob, there's no hell. A loving, kind God would never create hell. Well, tell that to Jesus. Jesus talked about hell a lot. He said, Jesus said that hell was created for the devil and his angels. And I love these uh, so-called Christian identity people. They say there's no hell, there's no devil, and yet the devil uh, got Eve pregnant. Uh, if you got, if you could figure that one out, let me know because. I can't figure that one out. How does a being that doesn't exist get Eve pregnant and then uh, he's going down into a hell that doesn't exist? Uh, scratching my head. I, 
I, I can't figure that one out. So, Verse 21, the strong among the mighty shall speak to him out of the midst of hell with them that help him. They are gone down. They lie uncircumcised, slain by the sword. Asher, Asher, um, Asher was one of the tribes of Israel, by the way. Asher is there and all her company. His graves are all about him, all of them slain, fallen by the sword, whose graves are set in the sides of the pit, and her company is round about her grave, all of them slain, fallen by the sword, which caused terror in the land of the living. There is Elam, and all her multitude, round about her grave, all of them slain, fallen by the sword, which are gone down uncircumcised into the nether parts of the earth, which caused their terror in the land of the living. Yet they have borne their shame with them that go down to the pit. Verse 25. They have set her a bed in the midst of the slain with all her multitude. Her graves are round about him, all of them uncircumcised, slain by the sword. Though their terror was caused in the land of the living, yet have they borne their shame with them that go down to the pit. He is put into the midst of them that be slain. Uh, a little note here. There's three words, basically, maybe four, that are translated as hell. One is Sheol, a uh, Hebrew word for uh, the grave. And then there's Gehenna, which was a, uh, they named a garbage dump that was constantly burning in Jerusalem. And they want you to think that, you know, that's, they just cremated the bodies in the garbage pit, you know, and burned them up. That's hell. And, um, and then there was Tartarus, which was the deepest abyss of hell, where the fallen angels are kept in change of darkness. I think that's in Jude. And then there was Hades, which the Greeks uh, named that he was the god of the underworld. I mean, just because you take a Bible word and turn it into something else doesn't mean it's false. Unicorns. When did a unicorn become a horse with a horn coming out of its uh, forehead? Uh, you know, farting rainbows when it flies through the air. I mean, come on. You know what a unicorn is? It was an Asian rhino. It had one horn as opposed to the African rhinoceros, which has two horns. Yeah. It's even called... Uh, Unicornus, unicorn is, it's even spelled unicorn with an I-S on the end, Rhino, rhinoceros or rhinoceros, you know. When did a Asian rhino become a, uh, a horse? You know, they, they've renamed everything. It's just like the months and the planets. They named the planets after Greek and Roman gods. Who named them? Not me, not God. You know, who named all the days of the week? Saturn Day, or I mean Saturday. You know, who named the months? Not me. I didn't do it. All right, let's read 26. So in hell, it's talking about, you know, the group people in hell. There is Meshach, Tubal. Uh, these were... Um, I forget if these were uh, associated with Gog and Magog or if they're associated with Cain. Either way, they're not good. Uh, you ever heard of two-ball Cain? That's a Masonic password, by the way. Uh, there is Meshach, two-ball, and all her multitude. Her graves are round about him, all of them uncircumcised, slain by the sword, though they cause their terror in the land of the living. And they shall not lie with the mighty that are fallen of the uncircumcised, which are gone down to hell with their weapons of war 
and they have laid their swords under their heads, but their iniquities shall be upon their bones, though they were the terror of the mighty in the land of the living. Yea, thou shalt be broken in the midst of the uncircumcised, and shalt lie with them that are slain with the sword. Verse 29. There is Edom. Now, Edom was the, uh, what uh, Esau, he was the father of the Edomites. There is Edom, her kings and all her princes, which with their might are laid by them that were slain by the sword. They shall lie with the uncircumcised and with them that go down to the pit. There be the princes of the north, all of them, and all the Zidonians. Zidonians were uh, not a very nice people, from what I read in the Bible. And all the Zidonians, which are gone down with the slain, with their terror, they are ashamed of their might, and they lie uncircumcised, uncircumcised with them that be slain by the sword, and bear their shame with them that go down to the pit. Pharaoh shall see them and shall be comforted over all his multitude. Even Pharaoh and all his army slain by the sword, saith the Lord God. For I have caused my terror. Do you know God's a God of terror? To the wicked. For I have caused my terror in the land of the living. And he shall be laid in the midst of the uncircumcised with them that are slain with the sword, even Pharaoh and all his multitude, saith the Lord God. And that is the end of Ezekiel 32 and verse 32. That's the end. Ezekiel 32, 32. Boy, I'll tell you what, it is a whole lot of judgment. So, all blessings, praise, glory, and honor to God the Father and His only begotten Son, Jesus, who is the Christ, the Lamb slain from the foundation of the world. All blessings, praise, glory, and honor in Jesus' name. Amen. All right, let's go to the New Testament. 2 Corinthians chapter 5. Uh, Corinth was a city where Paul established a church. Corinth, and they were called Corinthians, and uh, it was in Greece, just like the New Testament, Greek. Verse 1. For we know that if our earthly house of this tabernacle were dissolved, now a tabernacle was a, a dwelling place, uh, Originally, well, it was made for the Lord had a tabernacle. So when it's talking about an earthly house of his tabernacle, of this tabernacle, it's talking about your human flesh body. That's what it's talking about. For we know that if our earthly house of this tabernacle were dissolved, we have a building of God and house not made with hands, eternal in the heavens. And I believe they're talking about our heavenly resurrected body, where we're going to be like the angels. Verse 2. For in this we groan, earnestly desiring to be clothed upon with our house, which is from heaven. If so be that being clothed, we shall not be found naked. Yeah, you don't want to be naked because uh, you got no covering for your sin. After all, God made a provision for his only begotten son, Jesus, who is the Christ, to shed his blood, to give us robes, white robes, washed in his blood. And that's what we are going to be clothed with. We're not going to be naked, right? Verse 4. 
For we that are in this tabernacle do groan, being burdened, not for that uh, we would be unclothed, but clothed upon, that mortality might be swallowed up of life. Mortality. You know, we mortal. Our mortal body will die. And it will be swallowed up of life. So that we can be given eternal life. Verse 5. Now he that hath wrought us for the self same thing as God, who also hath given unto us the earnest of the Spirit. Now, I don't know if you understand, an earnest, it's not just a name of a person, um, but it ha it's a legal term uh, in reference to giving something, giving a little something to wait until something is fulfilled. I don't know if I'm explaining that right, but it's like you're going to buy a car for $1,000, an old beater, and you give somebody $250 to hold it and say, I'll give you the rest of the money in a day or two. The 250 the down payment is the earnest. So you got to give them something for the contract to be valid. I hope I'm explaining that right. It's a legal term. It's uh, it's same thing like with a house. You know, you you put a down payment on a house and you say, okay, I got the mortgage coming. I just got to have the bank draw up the check and the papers and we'll take care of this, you know. But here, this money is, hold, you know, it's earnest to hold the place until the rest of the deal can be completed in full. And that's what the earnest of the Spirit is. The Lord gives his people the Holy Spirit on the earth, but they haven't gotten their resurrected bodies yet. So it's, but it's coming. It might be uh, another few hundred years, but uh, you know, everybody always asks me, Bob, do you think it'll be in our lifetime? I don't know. I don't know. But you know what? That's every day is a day closer. And when I first came to the Lord, I always had this feeling that I would be able to see with my eyes the coming of the Lord. But then again, people for the last couple hundred years have been saying the same thing. So, you know, don't, uh, I'm not a prophet of the Lord. I have, that's not my calling. I'm a teacher. Verse 6. Therefore, we are always confident, knowing that whilst we are at home in the body, in the sinful flesh, we are absent from the Lord. So, if we're called upon to get our heads cut off, like Matthew 24 and, and other parts of the Bible, just imagine if they, I, I've been hearing guillotines in the United States for a while. Wouldn't surprise me, but just think, you know, your head goes in the guillotine, you close your eyes, woof, and you open your eyes and guess what? There you are under the altar, under God's altar, just awaiting your resurrected body. You're going to be with Christ. And you know what? That is a guaranteed ticket to the kingdom. I mean, that's like, yeah, that's guaranteed ticket, man. That's like, that's like the Lord himself handed you that ticket. So, willing rather to be absent from the body is to be present with the Lord. Wherefore, we labor that whether present or ab absent, we may be accepted of him. For we, may, we must all appear before the judgment seat of Christ. Um, the judgment seat of Christ is for the, the saved. The great white throne judgment is 
the judgment of the unsaved, the wicked, the Christ rejectors. Uh, if you see the white throne judgment, you're in big trouble. For we must all appear before the judgment seat of Christ, that every one may receive the things done in his body, according to that he hath done, whether it be good or bad. So those that have spent their whole life in service to the Lord that are saved will be given, I guess you could say, a higher rank, like in the army. You got privates, sergeants, uh, lieutenants, captains, colonels, generals. Well, not exactly the same thing, but people are going to have different levels of responsibility and different levels of I guess you could say rewards. So what what you've done in this life will determine your rank and reward in the next. And uh, there's a verse in the Bible that says that uh, I'm paraphrasing, but if you win a soul to Christ, it's going to cover a multitude of sin. Yeah. So if you if you help pull somebody out of the fire, that's that's you, there's not many things you could do uh, better than that, in my opinion. So, but I'm not an evangelist. I'm a teacher. Big difference. I take uh, teachers. A teacher's job is to take a baby in Christ and turn them into a soldier. And you know babies, when you you do things a baby don't want, you know, they'll be kicking, crying, and screaming. But uh, and the life of a soldier is hard. Trust me. Life of a soldier is not easy. And it's lonely. Uh... It just, that's just the way it is. So, for we must all appear before the judgment seat of Christ that everyone may receive the things done in his body according to that he hath done, whether it be good or bad, knowing therefore the terror of the Lord, the terror of the Lord. That's not for the believers. That's for the unbelievers. Knowing therefore the terror of the Lord, we persuade men, but we are made manifest unto God, and I trust also are made manifest in your consciences. For we commend not ourselves again unto you, but give you occasion to glory on our behalf, that ye may have somewhat to answer them, which glory in appearance, glory in appearance, but not in heart. And whether we be beside ourselves, it is to God, or whether we be sober, it is for your cause. For the love of Christ constraineth us, constraineth us because we thus judge that if one died for all, then we're all dead. See, Christ died for all his people. And we were all dead in sin, weren't we? I know I was. Verse 15, And that he died for all, that they which live should not henceforth live unto themselves, but unto him which died for them and rose again. We're not supposed to live for ourselves. When you come to Christ, you don't live for yourself. You live for the Lord. And I hope I'm doing just that with... Um, these studies you know jesus told peter to feed my sheep feed my lambs i hope i'm doing that so verse 16 wherefore henceforth know we no man after the flesh yea though we have known christ after the flesh yet now henceforth know we him no more not in the flesh verse 17 Therefore, if any man be in Christ, he is a new creature. Old things are passed away. Behold, all things are become new. 
I don't know about you, but when I came to Christ, um, I quit doing drugs. I quit smoking. Um, I mean, it wasn't one day where it just clicked off. No, it's, you know, but uh, <sighs> my life changed. I used to love music. Now it kind of just kind of disgust me in a lot of ways so and one of my younger my younger brother who died is one of his favorite songs was highway to hell acdc uh, yeah sad but it's the way it goes oh and by the way a doctor killed him yeah a doctor killed him Doctor killed my dad, too. A uh, doctor at the VA even admitted it. Not the same doctor, but that doctor even told me they they uh, did my dad. But uh, I don't think I'm going to see either one of them. I really don't. Well, maybe the White Throne Judgment, but it's the way it is, people. It's the way it is. Uh, see. Therefore, if any man be in Christ, he is a new creature. Old things are passed away. Behold, all things are become new, and all things are of God, who hath reconciled us to himself by Jesus Christ, and hath given to us the ministry of reconciliation. You know what reconciliation is? A husband and wife have a bad fight, and they split up for a while, and then they both decide they miss each other and they love each other and they apologize to each other and then they get back together. That's reconciliation. Think about Christ and his people divorced Israel, Jeremiah 3, 8 and Jeremiah 31, 31. God wanted to reconcile with his bride. And people will tell you, oh, Israel's not the church and the church is not Israel. Well, one day they're going to find out how just how wrong they are. Verse 19, to wit, that God was in Christ, reconciling the word unto himself, not imputing their trespasses unto them. Trespasses, you know, sin. And hath committed unto us the word of reconciliation. The only way to be reconciled Back to God the Father is through Jesus Christ. Jesus Christ said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man cometh unto the Father but by me. But of course, if you're a Zionist uh, pastor, uh, the you-know-whos don't need Jesus. They got a covenant with the Father already, they'll tell you. They make Christ a liar. And of course... Who do they serve? The father of lies. Yeah. To wit that God was in Christ, reconciling the world unto himself, not imputing their trespasses unto them, and hath committed unto us the word of reconciliation. Now then we are ambassadors for Christ. Do you know we are supposed to be ambassadors for Christ? You know what an ambassador is? One, con one country's representative to another. We are heaven's representative on this earth. Absolutely. Now then, we are ambassadors for Christ, as though God did beseech you by us. We pray you in Christ's stead, be ye reconciled to God, for he hath made him to be sin for us. Christ is sin for us, who knew no sin that we might be made the righteousness, righteousness of God in him. Wow. All right, let's go to 1 Peter chapter 3. Boy, uh, I did hundreds of weddings in my time. And I'm not, I'm not exaggerating. I did hundreds of weddings. Uh, there was one day, I did four weddings in one day. And there was a three-day weekend that I did five of them. 
<laughs> so, yeah, I was, I was a busy little beaver. Uh, busy as a beaver, I guess you could say. And no, not Justin Bieber. Beaver, beaver. Well, you you get the idea. Um, but uh, women didn't like this. Uh, wives, I don't think any wife. Uh, only a couple times a wife would, uh, future wife would uh, ask me to read this. So, First Peter chapter three verse one. Likewise, ye wives, be in subjection to your own husbands. A husband was to be the covering for his wife. Protection, people. That if any obey not the word, they also uh, they may all uh, they also may be without the word be won by the conversation of the wives, while they behold your chaste conversation coupled with fear. Who's adorning? Let it not be that outward adorn, adorning of plating the hair and wearing of gold or putting on of apparel, but let it be the hidden man of the heart. In other words, uh, don't be wearing jewelry, you know, godly, go, ungodly jewelry and uh, fancy hairdos and fancy clothing. No. Put on beauty from the inside i guess you could say so but it let it be the hidden man of the heart in that which is not corruptible even the ornament of a meek and quiet spirit which is in the sight of god of great price yeah M much more important a meek and quiet spirit verse five for after this manner, in the old time, the holy women also, holy women also, uh, Jezebel's not in that uh, category. Holy women also who trusted in God adorned themselves, being in subjection unto their own husbands. Even as Sarah obeyed Abraham, calling him Lord, whose daughters ye are, as long as ye do well and are, and are not afraid with any amazement. Likewise, oh, here comes here comes the husband part. Likewise, ye husbands, dwell with them according to knowledge, giving honor unto the wife as unto the weaker vessel. Let's face it. Uh, when it comes from the waist down, men and women can generally be fairly close strength-wise. But when it comes to the upper body, men win almost always hands down and ladies if you believe in equality and you don't believe that uh i tell you what have any woman you want challenge the heavyweight champion boxing challenge uh champion male boxing champion and uh go for it and see what happens or weightlifting yeah Men competing, you know, men p pretending they're females and competing in women's sports and they're taking all the medals, I guess, or whatever. So, you know, men are supposed to be stronger to protect the wife. That is what they're supposed to do. Likewise, ye husbands, dwell with them according to knowledge, giving honor unto the wife as unto the weaker vessel and as being heirs together of the grace of life that your prayers be not hindered do you know that an, uh, a bad home life can hinder your prayers yeah verse 8 finally be ye all of one mind having compassion one of another love as brethren be pitiful be courteous not rendering evil for evil or railing for railing but contrawise blessing knowing that ye are thereunto called that ye should inherit a blessing for he that will love life and see good days let him refrain his tongue from evil and his lips that they speak no guile what is guile uh it's basically subtle lying 11 
Let him eschew evil. What is eschew? It means hate. Let him eschew evil and do good. Let him seek peace and ensue it. For the eyes of the Lord are over the righteous, and his ears are open unto their prayers. But the face of the Lord is against them that do evil. And who is he that will harm you if ye be followers of that which is good? But and if ye suffer for righteousness sake, happy are ye. You know, when uh, I think it was Peter was thrown into prison and was beaten. They rejoiced. They counted it worthy that they were that they were able to suffer shame for Christ. In Acts chapter 5, they were preaching the gospel of Christ in the temple. And the you know who's didn't like it. So in verse 40, uh, and when they had called the apostles and beaten them. Wow. But if you listen to TBN, uh, you know, oh, well, you know, you're supposed to have money fly down from heaven, you know, get beaten. Uh-uh, no, uh-uh, that's, that's, you know, they, they, they don't teach that stuff anymore. Uh-uh. And when they had called the apostles and beaten them, they commanded that they should not speak in the name of Jesus and let them go. And they, the apostles, departed from the presence of the council, rejoicing, rejoicing that they were counted worthy to suffer shame for his name. And daily in the temple and in every house, they ceased not to teach and preach Jesus Christ. Boy, you don't, you don't hear that taught on TBN, do you? No, absolutely not. So, yeah. All right, let's go back. So, 1 Peter 3, 14. But and if ye suffer for righteousness sake, happy are ye and be not afraid of their terror, the terror of the wicked upon your fleshy body. But and if ye suffer for righteousness sake, happy are ye and be not afraid of their terror, neither be troubled, but sanctify the Lord God in your hearts and be ready always to give an answer to every man that asketh you of a reason of the hope that is in you with meekness and fear. That word answer, that's where we get the word um, apology from. Uh, have you ever heard of the expression apologetics? Uh, it is the study of why we believe you're not get you're not apologizing for your belief but you're it's giving an answer but they it comes apology comes from the same greek root word you're basically giving an answer somebody says how come you believe in god creating the heaven and the earth and not evolution you know and then you should uh be able to give a good answer Hey, I've seen uh, I've seen miracles. I've seen a couple. So uh, it, they didn't evolve over mil millions and millions of years. So what can I tell you? And be ready always to give an answer to every man that asketh you a reason of the hope that is in you with meekness and fear, having a good conscience that whereas they speak evil of you, oh yeah, that. That Bob guy, man, we used to hang out and smoke weed and, and, and have some beers and shots and chase girls. And, and, and now he's too good. Oh, he found Jesus. He's too good to hang out with us and do that stuff anymore. He thinks he's better than us. You ever heard that? I have. I have. Absolutely. Having a good conscience that whereas they speak evil of you as of evildoers, that they may be ashamed that falsely accuse your good conversation of Christ. 
For it is better, if the will of God be so, that ye suffer for well-doing than for evil-doing. Yeah, if you're going to go to prison, go to prison because you preach Christ. Don't go to jail for murder. 18. For Christ also hath once suffered for sins, the just for the unjust, that he might bring us to God being put to death in the flesh, but quickened by the Spirit, and by which he also went and preached unto the spirits in prison. Yeah, did you know that Christ went to hell for three days and three nights and preached to the spirits in prison? Abraham's bosom? Three days that changed the world. My Bible study. Three days that changed the world. Lord Jesus went and preached to all the Old Testament saints that died. Yeah, they were in Abraham's bosom. Abraham, Isaac, Jacob, Israel. King David, Samson, oh yeah, they were there. Adam, they're not there anymore. They went there 2,000 years ago, approximately, they went up to the Lord. And they're waiting for their resurrected bodies. By which also he, Christ, went and preached unto the spirits in prison, which sometime were disobedient, but once the long-suffering of of God waited in the days of Noah while the ark was a preparing wherein few that is eight souls were saved by water do you know that the the earth flood was salvation for Noah from the wickedness of this world yeah <laughs> it was the Lord baptized the world I guess you could say the like figure whereunto even baptism doth also now save us, not the putting away of the filth of the flesh, but the answer of a good conscience toward God, by the resurrection of Jesus Christ, who has gone into heaven and is on the right hand of God, angels and authorities and powers being made subject unto him. To which I say, Amen. And people, this is the conclusion of uh the terror series the terror of the lord or is it yeah i guess it is all i know is people are going to be looking at a fiery indignation indignation god's extreme hatred for those who rejected the gift and offer of his son ain't gonna be pretty people Ain't going to be pretty. And I have a feeling a lot of people I know are going to be at that white throne judgment. So, all blessings, praise, glory, and honor in Jesus' precious name. Amen.